T minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. everybody, Chad Westport here. We're back with another edition of Cannabis in Your Body with Dr. Maya B. Shields. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you again for making time to join us. Help us understand the endocannabinoid system and what this wacky plant eh, can do to and for us. So a couple of the questions that I wanted to touch on today really involves the endocannabinoid system uh and you know previous episodes you had mentioned that it has a high and a low point kind of like an ocean there's a high tide and a low tide with the mornings being lower and you had mentioned you know this may be why wake and bake can hit people different and i'm just like light bulb moment okay so can you tell us a little bit more about the cycle and do we know why the endocannabinoid has a cycle So part of it is because the endocannabinoid system tends to follow cortisol um, and that it kind of comes like right after it. And cortisol also has a cycle um, within the circadian rhythm. Now, there's been a couple studies on the endocannabinoid system and circadian rhythm, but I don't know for a fact if we know you know, that every single person, it's always the same. Um, In most studies, uh, if you look at the average like population, you'd say that it'd be lowest, like right before we wake up in the morning. And then it's kind of climbing all day and it reaches its peak somewhere like in the early afternoon. And then it starts to kind of go back down. And there's so many other reasons why the wake and bake could feel different. But I mean, a part of this could be that these molecules compete with THC. They are when they're present, there's going to be like a buffering effect. There's going to be a a, a difference there. Um, And, you know, everything in our bodies is a balance. Everything in our bodies is um, a really complicated dance with what is what is available and what's there when when these molecules float around. Like so we you know, when we smoke, THC is going from our lungs into our brain you know, it doesn't just like beeline it to a receptor. It's it's kind of floating around and then it finds a receptor to okay. to bind to. It's like, whoa, here's, you know, here's hey, a receptor. Yeah. And then it sticks on for a certain amount of time and then here's a receptor. Now that hmm. amount of time that it sticks on is called receptor occupancy. So it's like, it'll stick on to like a certain amount of time. Um, there are other things that could happen, right? Like let's say it goes to stick on to that receptor but there's already an endocannabinoid there, then there's no place for it to bind because THC binds in the same location as an andamide. Um, or let's say that, you know, it it's floating around and because we we don't, there are things that we still don't yet, no one understand it's floating around in the receptor because there's endocannabinoids present. This receptor is localized maybe in a, in a different um, area. There are, there are things that we still don't, quite conceptualize about it um the other one being that a lot of people drink caffeine in the morning Mm -hmm. so that's definitely another difference there because you're adding in an entire other you know molecule and system and everything and for many of us dependents i mean like i will be the first to admit it i've taken multiple stabs at cutting coffee i (laughs) have done it before but Generally speaking, if I enter into a phase of working a lot, I end up back on caffeine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Back on caffeine. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a type of dependence that we don't really think about much, but that it definitely has an interplay. And that, you know, these 
these cycles in our body that that happen every day that you know for some of us happen every month that happen all the time like we we are always in these sort of like regulatory stages between like resting and you know, i think it's like usually digesting is the other one but mm. um you know a, a restful state and a recovery state an active state and a doing things state and i think that that's a piece of that you know of that transition is the endocannabinoid system having having highs and lows and I regularly am I'm talking about it as the wake and bake because I think a lot of times it is viewed as a stoner stereotype to wake and bake, to be like, oh, that person's lazy. They're so mm-hmm. unproductive. They can't do anything without they they wake up and the first thing they do is take a hit. Like the first thing they do is rip a bowl. It's like, oh man, what a stoner, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and like, what if you had replaced that with taking an antidepressant, which everyone takes in the morning? Right. Right. What if you were to replace that with taking an allergy medicine? I mean, not saying that they're interchangeable because they're not. They're different molecules, different, you know, different systems, different purposes. But that for some people that wake and bake, if you find the right thing, the right dose, the right amount, that is what keeps you from having pain flares. That is what enables you to focus. That is what leads for you to have decreased social anxiety and be able to go and be more productive, to be to be able to go and function better. And, and, you know, this is subjective, right? This is something that is going to be different from person to person. And it, it matters what your tolerance is and, and, you know, all sorts of other variables here, but the wake and bake absolutely is a different therapeutic medical purpose for many reasons, if not for also the fact that your endocannabinoid system is different. And so it might feel different. That is awesome. And, you know, all of those benefits that you were just mentioning, I can personally attest to those in my life. And, you know, that kind of leads to the next question, too. I heard you mention circadian rhythm um, because, you know, for many years of my life, uh, I was a musician, I was a nightclub DJ, and I definitely have like my stomach has always given me issues and it definitely has its own cycles. And there is a period like four to like eight in the morning is the worst, whether I'm awake or whether I'm sleeping and wake up during that period, that's always like a hard time for me and cannabis helps in those moments. So I wonder if that's, well, it sounds like that could be related, but back to my question here, circadian (laughs) rhythm. Um, Well, it sounds like it's definitely really, I mean, that's also when some people will get migraines will come on. Some people will have seizures that come on in there. That is the time for me that I like will startle myself awake in like a random jolt of pain, like a Mm -hmm. random. Right like you don't know of, why yeah just pain yeah and it's like why does that hurt and then it goes away and it's like oh whoa why did that hurt for two <laughs> two seconds or it doesn't and you're like oh my gosh i'm in pain but like you know it's it's one of those things that um can disrupt sleep and that's another thing about sleep being you know a really complicated thing when people ask about if cannabis can help sleep it's like well sleep is such a complex thing that people have trouble falling asleep for different reasons. People have trouble staying asleep for different reasons, but definitely one of the reasons why I think cannabis is helpful for sleep has to do with this is that this part of um, time when you're supposed to be resting, it it's part of time when some of us are like very susceptible to things. Very low. Now, you know, let's say, um, you know, kind of go back to the circadian rhythm. Let's say people, you know, were like night workers and their their rhythms all thrown off. And let's just even hypothesize or let's just say that they're working at an indoor grow. So they're getting that sunlight stimulation during those night hours. Is it possible that like the ECS cycle would reverse? Uh, or- so I don't know that that is ever been studied. I know that there's been studies on circadian rhythm with night workers and that it absolutely disrupts like your hormone um, signaling throughout Mm -hmm. your day. And that there's, and that there are consequences to basically altering your rhythm. I also know that some people naturally cycle in a different way. Like, so there are morning people and night people like that very much. So (laughs) very much so exists. Um, and I don't think that there's enough, I don't think that there's enough to like solidly say, I would argue that I would argue that like my best guess would be that it absolutely would be affected because if you're affecting the hormones and you're affecting those right. other things, you're going to cause changes in all of the tangential systems and the endocannabinoid system is very related to the hormone endocrine system. It is like, 
I mean, it's hard to say anything that the endocannabinoid system doesn't play a pretty vital role in. And I would, ha- so I would hazard that, yes, it would be disrupted by changes in that. I think that there are so many large scale changes that occur, again, sleep architecture, sleep, like just in general with like our sleep wake cycling in our functionality, at, like for our bodies. Like I, I know I can feel it right, because like at some point we're going to have to start looking at all of the collective experience of everyone who's used cannabis and value it. Like at, mm-hmm. at some point we're going to start valuing all of that in, in a different way because we all have experience and we all have real real experience. And there's tons of variables in the real world, but that doesn't mean that the information that we possess by experimenting on ourselves and in our communities, like, isn't valuable. So, I mean, it's, it's happening. It's, it's happening. And I'm like, great. I'm super grateful that I'm here for it. Like I never thought in, you know, a while when I was like, when I was like, in my car, like, and when I was a teenager, like, you know, hiding in the back, we used to like roll down our seats to like be lying, you know, yes. lying down in the seat, <laughs> lying down in the seat, like freaking out, like not moving, you know, being like in some random, some random spot, oh, being like, oh my God, am I too close? So my neighbor is going to come by. Like, I'm just like, you know, in the prohibition. Like, yeah. Yeah. and so I never imagined, um, I never imagined that we would come so far in such a short amount of time in terms of like advocacy. And that's been, mm-hmm. that, that's been something that I am not like, I, I'm still like amazed by it to this day. And I'm, I'm so grateful for it because yeah, like I, I knew it when I was young, I was like, I'm definitely going to do this for the rest of my life. Like this, I knew it from the moment that I first smoked, like that moment, it was like, yeah, this helps me. <laughs> like, that's-, that's it period and you know again you gotta you gotta admire the resolve of a person to to follow through with that and to you know achieve the the accolades that you have achieved so hats off to you thanks and uh let everybody know too uh they can find you on your website project chronic definitely go check her out there make sure you get on the mailing list for some of the secret sauce so yes get in there instagram website all down in the show notes um this has been a fun one i know we've got a couple more planned but thank you once again for your time and uh everybody watching stay tuned more from dr miyabe shields cannabis in your body to come we'll catch you next time see you soon see ya